hello everybody. Uh, I first have to say that I'm um, really excited to be here again. I was there uh, here last year when the uh, blockchain conference happened and uh, it's really great to see such a crowded um, room again and um, I mean I don't have to say uh, much how the, the, the situation became uh, especially right now very extraordinary uh, how, how big everything grew and also especially in the cryptocurrency world uh, there is extremely flourishing market at the moment and uh, not, not even to mention of course uh, uh, Bitcoin I mean cryptocurrencies and blockchain are not necessarily um, blockchain is the underlying technology behind it uh, and it's, uh, it's the technology itself Cryptocurrency is more, more, it's more kind of one implementation or one use case of it. But uh, this talk is specifically targeted at um, uh, blockchain in general. Uh, we are going to talk about the, uh, briefly the, uh, the definition and uh, what the benefit is. And then we're going right into uh, the use case cri in cryptocurrencies because this is just um, everyone who has uh, uh, really read about it and um, and uh, uh, has, has done some, some work on it or, uh, <clears throat> or have, have done anything re related to it really knows that cryptocurrency is an exciting phenomena. And then at the, at, the, the, at the end we're talking about investment opportunities in cryptocurrency mining, in Bitcoin mining, in Ethereum mining, etc. And why mining is the core and the essential part of, of, the, of cryptocurrencies and also on, uh, of uh, blockchains themselves. So let's get right into it. Uh, this is a slide of uh, some, maybe have seen this kind of cartoon. Um, what is a blockchain? And uh, I think you can summarize it um, very, very short. In, in very short, uh, um, with very few words, but of course it's a bit uh, t uh, tricky to understand it. So a blockchain is a, a digital asset that is duplicable, um, but not changeable, not, manipula ma not manipulatable, or uh, yeah, how, how you, ca you can also say immutable. So what does that mean? For example, in the digital world, Everyone, I mean, we can just copy and paste anything. We just, it's all bits, so we just copy. If it's a database, if it's a, it's a, if it's a music song, if it's a movie, um, any file, we can duplicate very easily. And, uh, and just uh, also, if we have duplicated it, we can change it, we can fake it. And um, this, is, uh, this makes it impossible to have kind of unique digital things um, uh, because you, you, ca you can do that. Now blockchain came and blockchain makes it possible to have unique digital assets because they, because a blockchain is a, 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 a duplicable uh, good uh, like any other di digital uh, token, but you cannot change it. You cannot change it and no, no one knows. So uh, this is very important to understand and this is really a, a huge, this is why all this innovation is happening because now we can have digital un, un, unique a, uh, assets. So, uh, and that of course gave rise to cryptocurrencies, uh, to Bitcoin and to a lot of other innovation in that space. Because for example Bitcoin, of, every Bitcoin is unique of course, there's 21 million Bitcoins and uh, that makes it possible to have this form of currency in a digital, digital currency, in a digital world. So duplicable but not changeable, digital good. There is a difference between public and private blockchains. Um, the, uh, uh, in the private uh, blockchain, we refer mostly to, for example, blockchains that businesses want to use for their own purpose, conglomerates of businesses, banks are getting together, making their own blockchain maybe. Uh, the difference of a uh, private and a public chain is that private chains are mostly non -complete, not completely open, so not everyone can participate. Um, and they are, in a way, uh, not fully immutable because uh, businesses maybe like to tend uh, like to have the privilege to maybe change the chain the, the blockchain if there is an emergency happening or anything for the public blockchains like cryptocurrencies uh, nearly all 
uh, cryptocurrencies are uh, public blockchains. We have a fully open system. Anyone can participate, um, can do mining, can, can use it, uh, etc. cetera. Um, uh, but of course, that also brings with it that uh, uh, it's immutable. So of course, there is now the Ethereum. Some of you might be more into the details there. Uh, there is a con current debate of whether there is some hard forks done on blockchains or not. But I don't want to go into the detail. In, ge in, in general, pu public chains are really, they are as they are. And they cannot be, they cannot be changed or are um, manipulated. And this is also the big strength of it. And that's also why cryptocurrencies have the chance to be, to are, uh, to be digital currencies. Um, of course, there's also other uh, differentiations, for example, in the decentralizations. The public blockchains are more decentralized. Uh, in the, in the, for the private uh, chains, uh, you have only a smaller kind of uh, group or conglomerate. Uh, for the public, you, have, you, can, you can distribute it arbitrarily, and um, the more distributed they are, the more uh, benefit you get because you don't have this threat of central parties. For example, uh, if, if you have a Visa or MasterCard and Visa uh, is uh, under attack, the, their, central, uh, their center is under attack, it's dangerous for the whole network. For Bitcoin there, or for cryptocurrencies or for public blockchains, there are no central, uh, th uh, central entities that can be attacked and then can harm the network. That's really a big benefit. Of course, also for public blockchains, there is no authority, that, which is uh, in a lot of cases a, a big benefit. There is no one that can um, dictate the system. Whereas in private blockchains, it's the more private a chain gets, the more of these benefits you are losing. Because uh, if, if, you, if you contract a, uh, a chain, a blockchain so close that it's only a few entities, one to two entities, uh, yeah, you, you just lose a lot of innovation. Because you make it, there's a bigger threat that it's getting attacked. It's uh, uh, the authority, the, those small businesses can, are basically the authority, etc. So I think this is, uh, if you understand, if you can understand that, uh, that, that uh, gives a, a very good, I think, image of what's the difference. And I can say, for example, there's big businesses like IBM, et cetera, that focus more on the private chain side, uh, helping businesses with their own um, implementations to solve uh, their problems with blockchain technology. Uh, and then there is this, uh, this public space, space where there's other applications, um, but also the, uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, let me just quickly ask, uh, who of you is familiar with uh, cryptocurrencies or has heard the term cryptocurrencies so far? Cool. Okay, that's good to see. Um, just uh, um, to, to explain, I mean, Bitcoin was there since was founded 2009. Um, and Bitcoin was actually the, the thing everything uh, started. And of course, uh, people then uh, said or um, uh, businesses or, uh, or researchers said, okay, Bitcoin is great, but we can use the technology be behind it and use it for our own purpose. So that, w that is when, when uh, it happened, they extracted from Bitcoin, they extracted blockchain technology because Bitcoin was the first blockchain. And um, since Bitcoin, there has been a lot of other cryptocurrencies and... Uh, and um, and, a lot, and, and it's really an innovative uh, playground, and a lot of innovation has happened in that field. So uh, it's very good to see uh, that so many people have heard about the term cryptocurrencies uh, already. This is just a, a rough overview of what, uh, what the cryptocurrency market looks like. There are the miners. I will explain that very shortly, how, um, what uh, role they play. There's the merchants, and there's the exchanges where you can buy the cryptocurrencies, and they, they vitalize the networks themselves. So um, all three parts are essential, of course. You need the users to use them. You need the, the, the exchanges to buy the tokens, and you need the miners to validate the transactions. <clears throat> this is a, a short summary of uh, the uh, features a cryptocurrency offers. It's really remarkable, I can say. R why is it remarkable? Because cryptocurrencies, or let me also speak concretely about Bitcoin, give an opportunity to um, move money independently of any third party. For example, if you want to move money right now over banks, uh, there is always an intermediary bank in between that um, 
that has, of course, a certain kind of control. And um, yeah, it's just always in the middle. With Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, you have the opportunity to send money peer to peer. So for example, uh, someone in America or someone here can send an, um, a farmer in Africa directly money without having f uh, intermediary banks or anyone in between that costs fee, uh, that costs time, etc. And you can really send Bitcoin from any place in the world to any anywhere else within light speed and without any boundaries. So there's no restrictions on that. And of course, this is a big thing, um, I, I see, because people now have the choice to really, um, from an idealist's perspective, uh, have the choice to, to own their own money by owning their co bitcoins and also send their money uh, to anyone else without having any intermediary in between. So um, before, uh, it was very hard to, there was not so much um, uh, options to have that. Uh, you're mostly binded to banks or um, <clears throat> and have to trust their money to the banks, we, which I don't want to say it's by, by definition wrong, but it's now just the opportunities there now for people to have the choice to be, have independent money, and uh, it's there. Um, coming to cryptocurrencies concretely, uh, I want to highlight just two of them now. I've uh, spoken to, to, to more uh, before. Uh, we have the big giants right now is uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's the, the, those are the biggest cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin has a market capacity of 20 billion uh, US dollars right now, and Ethereum is around 1.5 billion. The others, there's Dash, Monero, Litecoin, and really, if you look it up on the internet, there's more than, uh, I think, 700 cryptocurrencies right now, because everyone can create their cryptocurrency. But of course, it's always, if, if I create a, a cryptocurrency tomorrow, I mean, the, the value only comes, of course, with the adoption and with the use case it brings. And Bitcoin um, is so valuable, or people are um, uh, uh, spending so much money, to buying bitcoins is because uh, they the the network uh, is the most secure right now and it's the biggest and it's the first cryptocurrency and it offers all the features that I was uh, explaining uh, shortly before. Now, um, what uh, why is actually uh, or what makes bitcoin or cryptocurrencies uh, uh, special now? Coming also to the decentralized uh, decentralization aspect. And this is uh, really that there is no central uh, authority. And this can only work. And this is really the, the innovation uh, of Bitcoin. This can only, the, the big trick on this was that there are so, uh, some entities called miners. And miners are distributed all over the world and they are validating the transactions. And this is the, the, the fundamental difference. Visa or MasterCard or any other payment system, they are most mostly central, and then you have the central aspect. But how can you decentralize this and have a decentralized verification um, process that not belongs to one authority or one single player? And this is done by mining. And uh, this is happening right now all over the world. There's large mining facilities uh, distributed and my, anyone can, can mine and participate. And um, those miners are validating the transactions, the Bitcoin transactions. And for that to be incentivized, the Bitcoin network is giving out a blocker reward, a reward for the ones that validates the transactions. And uh, this, uh, re this block reward, um, is at the moment for Bitcoin around 1,800 Bitcoins every day, which is a lot of money. It's around $2 million every day that is given out to all the miners. And uh, um, this gives the incentives that miners are doing it. Otherwise, people would say, why should I use uh, so much electricity and put so much effort in it if I don't get rewarded? And this is really also a very big uh, benefit that Bitcoin offers, this mining concept um, that you have these miners that uh, get incentivized from the system. 
Um, don't want to go too much into the technical things, uh, but just a, a rough over, uh, outline of how the mining industry evolved. There was at the beginning uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, who mined uh, basically with his laptop. He was the only miner in the space. There was none other, and that of course means that he mined all the crypto, all the bitcoins at the beginning until the com competition arose and until more miners came. It's really incredible. Satoshi mined more than one million bitcoins in that time, and he still has them uh, in, in his wallet. Um, a very short time later, people figured out that they can use graphic cards uh, as a next step. They're more efficient in mining, and then uh, engineers figured out FPGA modules can be even better, and then uh, there, were, there was a big jump to the ASIC mining uh, uh, machines, to ASIC chips. Those are chips that are specifically designed uh, to only do the hashing algorithms for Bitcoin. Small nanometer uh, um, uh, designed chips. Um, that are just extremely powerful uh, and do nothing else than, than Bitcoin mining. And uh, it's really interesting because there's a story, for example, maybe you have heard it, uh, or that it didn't happen too, too rarely. People that were in the early days started to mine, for example, I think in, in England that was, uh, that was one, uh, where uh, someone mined uh, uh, with his computer, I think more than uh, around five years, four to five years ago, and uh, the, uh, and at one point, uh, there was no market for Bitcoin. That was really the, the, the very early people. And uh, at one point, his girlfriend said, well, uh, please shut down, or what do you do with, with, uh, with the laptop all the time? It's, it's making a lot of noise, and it's, he it's hot. And, um, and he, was, uh, he said, yeah, I'm mining uh, Bitcoins. And um, at some point, he was just saying, OK, well, I don't know. I have to put it away. My girlfriend is also not liking it. So he shut down the laptop. At one time, he woke up uh, in the morning, and he read that Bitcoin is now trading at more than $100. So he really di directly jumped up and, uh, and checked how much Bitcoin did he mine uh, previously, because he remembered, oh, they, 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 they can't be true. So he figured out that he mined more than 300,000 Bitcoin, which is more than 300 million. Uh, uh, or uh, 30 million by the time they traded over $100. So he, of course, jumped up and said, oh my God, where is this laptop? And he realized then that the laptop was uh, thrown away and put to one uh, disposal or to one uh, waste disposal place. Uh, and um, he then basically was searching for uh, investors to search this place to get this laptop because it's $30 million value on that laptop. So, um, and uh, he raised some money and got a search troop together, but they didn't find the laptop. So it's really, I mean, those stories are incredible. So that, that means those, this laptop is still somewhere, probably destroyed, but uh, there's 300,000 Bitcoins on that wallet and no one has access to it because the private key was on that laptop and it's not available anymore. So th this is just remarkable. But, and he mined that with his own laptop. So by now, the mining industry has gone into a very big uh, shift from this early stage people where there was the home mining, uh, you plug your machine uh, at home and you mine a little bit, to the shift of large scale mining. And this is the current state of it. And um, there is big uh, mining uh, companies, not too many uh, to say it up front. And those mining companies have of course picked the, the best place on the world where there is the lowest electricity, prices and the best condition for mining and have built up huge facilities and uh, to enjoy the, the economical benefits of it. You see here um, on the top, there's our Enigma farm uh, and on the, uh, it's a farm in Iceland, also on the, on the lower uh, picture you see an ASIC uh, farm of us, uh, also in Iceland. Um, this is just one example, there's also other companies doing mining. But uh, I just want to highlight the fact that this was the, this was the shift in the market. So it went from home miners that uh, all mined a little bit to these large scale facilities. And of course, the large scale, f why, why, grew the, why did they grow so much and why did that happen? It's because the big companies that were in these highly efficient places had a lot of economy of scale and a lot of other benefits. Lowest electricity prices, uh, very good uh, environmental conditions. Um, etc. And of course also soft, on the software side there is controlling tools that make it more professional, more uh, optima, uh, optimal to mine in large-scale environment. 
And this is really an ex a very exciting space right now. So there's constantly a war of the, of the big mining companies to find the, the, the places on the, on the world where there's lowest electricity. Some people get, or some, on some places, there's electricity nearly for free, but of course it has to be treated with caution because it needs to be, of course, if you want a, a large amount of electricity, um, it needs to be uh, proper and of course it needs to be legal. So. Um, uh, some people, uh, I don't want to, maybe some people find a access to, to cheap electricity, but it's mostly not so, so sustainable. Sometimes it's even from, for, for uh, how can I say, uh, uh, if you steal electricity somewhere, or uh, this can also happen, but of course this is not a business model and this is not something sustainable to grow because if, if, you, if you steal 10 megawatts or something, at, at some point some people will realize that uh, something is missing. Um, um, this now is the, okay, I, I need to be very quick. Um, this is now, uh, this slide shows, or basically, what I want to just uh, quickly at the, begin, uh, at the end, I want to explain that there is an opportunity in, uh, in mining uh, because a lot of people are interested in that. We get a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, questions. So bi Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, you can either buy or you can mine them. And uh, a, lo a lot ask how uh, can you mine them and of course, what's the benefit of mining or should I buy them? And the, the, the answer to this question is you, uh, mining is a very attractive investment if you are doing it right. You can burn yourself a lot and it can be, uh, uh, you can lose a lot of money, um, uh, but if you do it right, there is a very, uh, it's a very attra attractive investment, there's a high chance that you're making a good profit. And how to do it right is basically you have to be the most efficient player in mining. And efficiency is categorized in three uh, um, and components, it's the hardware efficiency, the infrastructure efficiency, and the electricity rates. And you see on the chart here, you, we have three types of miners. Each miner has the same capacity, and now we are looking at the returns of the miner over time, and you're seeing very quickly that uh, the green miner comes to a hold at one point. Uh, the green miner uh, is here the lowest efficient miner, and, uh, um, and the, the blue and the, the orange one continue to mine. That is because the lowest efficient miner has the highest cost to, to run a, uh, a mining farm, and of course, he will be the first one that is in the reds and has to turn off the machines. But if he turns off the machines, he gives the market share to the rest of the others, so they will earn more. Because there is every day, for example, 1,800 bitcoins uh, mined every day. So that, of course, means that the, the ones that remain in the market are more efficient. They get a higher, a higher return then. And at one point, even the orange miner is coming to a hold, but the blue one gets a boost. So if you are the most efficient miner, this is really the key in mining. Um, of course, there's also other opportunities. For example, you can leverage on all the altcoins. You can, for example, if tomorrow um, Dash or another cryptocurrency is just skyrocketing in price, you can move the hash rate uh, to another coin and you can mine that and leverage on this. Um, uh, or, uh, and yeah, it's, you can really use the whole innovation of, of the altcoin market also if you do it right in mining. And this is what we also, what we're doing. Another chance, and then I'm uh, uh, basically, uh, there's a lot of other opportunities, but th these are the, the two most interesting ones, in my opinion. If you are wanting to participate in uh, mining in the large scale, uh, in, in how can I say, in a professional investment level, uh, with uh, larger investments, um, there's, uh, or on a securities level, there is an option right now um, uh, to do it via a fund with the Logos Fund. It's a fund that we have um, founded a, a year ago, and it offers high net worth individuals or companies uh, to invest in mining in a securities uh, level and really buy um, regulated uh, buy into a, into a, uh, a fund. Logos Fund is uh, a BaFin regulated uh, entity. Uh, it's a German financial authority. And I think I don't need to tell too much uh, about those returns. Uh, if you look at it, uh, maybe uh, it's difficult to see, but uh, the inception was in June 2016. And um, it, the chart is going to December uh, till the end of the year. And um, you see the on the blue line the uh, the 
uh, on the red line the, the Bitcoin price and on the blue line the Logos fund and you're seeing a return of, uh, of more than 40% profit in six months. This is something that is very, quite unusual uh, for funds, but of course because the market is flourishing and because uh, we uh, can leverage on the infrastructure and all the benefits of mining, it's possible to do this. Of course there is a, a risk involved in every investment uh, of cryptocurrency and in general I don't need to say, but I think those numbers are speaking for themselves and uh, we're very happy to uh, be part of that. And last uh, word now, um, now is the time to get into mining. Now is the best time. Why? Because there's only 25% of all the Bitcoins that can be mined left. And for example, for Ethereum, I mentioned it briefly earlier, there is around 15%. Of course, it, there's uh, some variable it depends on, but there's only a few coins mined, uh, left to be mined. And it's getting harder and harder. It's like gold. Uh, the competition is growing, it's getting harder and harder to mine. And uh, for example, as a big investor or also small, uh, especially now the big investors are thinking how can they get most of the Bitcoins in, best, in the best time and for the best price. And they can of course buy them on the market, driving the price up, or they are doing it in a clever way um, with mining. Um, uh, uh, so uh, to, to end this, uh, I would really say, of course you can look at the economical equation. More and more people are learning about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies uh, and the supply is uh, is uh, getting uh, thinner and it's harder and harder to, to that new coins are going into the market. 